biggest challenges to DoD, first of all, is scale. I mean, it is such a big domain that overrides all the other domains that we have to defend. It's cyber is a domain all by itself. And the challenge here is to develop the capabilities, the concepts into doctrine and capabilities they can take into that domain and win. Encryption. Encryption is the biggest issue, also speed and access to tools that you need and the time frame that you have to actually access the data. The military has amazing, very interesting security challenges. As a commercial sector, I can break into networks, right, as a penetration tester. Or I can work against foreign adversaries who have broken into commercial organizations, and hunt them down and find them. One of the things that I can't do as a civilian is break into a network where I haven't been given the permission to break into that network. How do you operate in very challenging environments like, you know, digitally, you know, dense urban terrain? Like you get into a city and there's cyber systems that go from users to individuals to infrastructures. I mean, let's face it, the way war is waged today and increasingly has a cyberspace component. Even traditional kinetic battles still have a cyber component to them. My background is digital forensics and response, and uh, we do a lot of training uh, down at Fort Gordon and at the, you know, for the United States Air Force at the 39th uh, Information Operations Squadron. The course that I teach and author, uh, Forensics 508, uh, which is our advanced incident response and threat hunting course, is one of the core of the curriculum uh, for the cyber protection teams. The military will have a, a block of training that SANS is a part of. So a SANS instructor will come in and they'll teach six days of standard SANS curriculum, say 504, 503, or 573. The week that follows that, there's a military instructor there that follows up with additional labs and exercises that reinforce the SANS material and lets them inject the military flavor to it. So of course, in particularly when you think about Department of Defense and everything, uh, we love to challenge students with environments so they can take the skills and knowledge they've learned in courses, right, and take it right into an environment. What NetWars is, is it's a simulation of a real live fire environment where you go in and apply the skills that you learn in a tournament format where you're kind of competing against other people or just building your own skills on your own. And uh, we have a version of NetWars that's focused on core. We call it core because it involves all different kinds of security disciplines. We also have one called DFIR Networks, which focuses on digital forensics and incident response. There's cyber defense networks, so that's for the defenders, it's focused on that. And we also have ICS Networks, which is industrial control systems networks. And you get in there and the idea is uh, to understand operations, operations are being impacted by an attacker, is to understand what those impacts are, what the right decisions to make, uh, be able to identify those attacks and start kind of but get that factory back in action, if you will. The Army has used NetWars as a delivery platform for all of their labs and exercises. They take those labs and exercises and they use the NetWars engine as the delivery platform to deliver the questions and answers to the students. An extension of NetWars is called CyberCity. CyberCity is a physical domain in miniature. It's six feet by eight feet, but it's a small city on top of a table. But underneath the table, we have real industrial control system equipment. We got a power grid. We have water control systems. We have all kinds of stuff. There's traffic lights, all kinds of things that come under siege by terrorists. And we have 18 different missions right now where we have military personnel going in there and they're trying to thwart the terrorist scenario. And some of these things involve restoring power after a terrorist-induced blackout, or preventing the terrorists from contaminating the water supply, or preventing the terrorists from hacking into the traffic lights and causing mayhem on the streets. We don't have fake scenarios. We don't have things that people are actually not going to see in the real world. We actually are taking our real world experience, applying it directly in the classroom, and bringing that uh, experience to the students. I know that the individuals that we are training uh, are going to be affecting not only uh, DoD infrastructure networks, and even if they end up leaving the service at some point, these are the individuals that are going to be tapped to become the leaders in protecting the nation's power grids, financial networks, and uh, key networks uh, that are not directly protected by uh, military units. And you see that happen all the time where people contact me and say, hey, I'm, I'm out of the service right now 
and the skills that I learned in your courses is directly helping me protect a nuclear power plant or is directly helping me protect the bank that I'm now working at. Where I work now and where I have worked, you can't always just come up with a capability that's not publicly available. So if you have to provide, if you're ever caught up in a jam where you have to say how you got data to something, meeting the people at the summits, getting access to their tools, all the networking, that's how you can always back up what you're finding with something that's publicly available to everyone. I believe steel sharpens steel, right? So I give my best in the classroom to try to help people learn how bad guys do their craft so we can defend against it. But I also learn from my students and uh, it, it makes us all better. It's very exciting. It's just fun. It's a really fun thing to do.